Hello, hi, um, my name is Jerry Sokrari, and today I'll be walking you through managing trade-offs during product development. Um, just a little bit of background from myself, um, I'm ex-Amazon and ex-NatWest, where I manage uh, multiple products um, along the way. Um, one of the hardest things within um, the product management lifecycle is um, basically being responsible for um, core product delivery and, you know, being a problem solver and also being a strategic thinker within the product cycle. And most of your role will revolve around, you know, managing trades off during the whole product development. Um, so I'll walk you through the journey and um, we'll start with just explaining what trade offs are within product development and then walk you through, you know, the importance of trade-offs, uh, key areas to evaluate um, during trade-offs and managing trade-offs and the techniques. And also very key um, point is decision-making tips within uh, product management as well. What is trade-offs? Basically, they're just like analyzing risks and probabilities and issues that may arise during uh, product development. And you could have these within like big or small organization, which basically you're looking at delivering a product and you're being um, put to a challenge whereby you have two competing priorities in order for you to choose from to what to go live first or, you know, depends on what the scenarios are. So um, in that instance, you have to make a call to say, okay, you know what, I want pro, um, I want future A to go live and future B to be on the backlog whilst we still walk around how we're going to deal with whatever risks or issues that may arise from not having future B and the backlog. So basically trade-off is just um, you managing the product um, delivery cycle and ensuring that things are still moving smoothly without any delays. Because as a product uh, manager, you have to have this at the back of your mind that you can deliver everything. Um, I'll get more into that in later on in this presentation. Trade-offs are very, very important within the product life cycle and product development. Um, one of the key areas within trade-off and um, the, one of the key importance within trade-off is that it gives you the opportunity to map out your must-have and your nice-to-have within the product lifecycle. It also gives you key insight into like increasing the um, speed of, of delivering functionalities or features, improving efficiency, also increasing revenue uplift and reducing costs during product development. Because in, in most cases, you you're working on a product where you're given a tight deadline and you're given a very tight budget as well. You then have to come up with creative ways to manage your team around that and also manage the product around that. Sometimes you may have, you may come to a roadblock where you have like competing priorities, like I mentioned earlier on, where you then have to um, pick and choose what exactly goes first or what exactly comes after um, during the product, product development life cycle. And these are key in decision-making when you're carrying out such, even though it's a medium size or large size product um, delivery or project at hand. It also gives you the opportunity to go to market fast and gain feedback from customers, which is also um, could be defined in a simpler terms as um, being agile within the tech um, workspace or product development workspace. So being agile is key within um, one of the key benefits of um, my of trade-offs being important because you tend to deliver faster rather than waiting for the whole thing. You have to communicate with your stakeholders to then understand what comes, what's important to the business, depending on what the business vision and what the business goals are. And in terms of key areas, we um, have actually structured it in three critical areas within product where you could um, manage trade-offs. So if you're looking at a product, the entire product life cycle, it comes through the business phase, um, then goes into the design phase and then goes into the technical phase. So within the business phase, um, where in terms of evaluating trade-offs, you could have an example of you're looking for a third party to use to deliver some additional functionality or to plug into play or to you know build on their technology and integrate it within your own whatever you're building and you know you have to look at what's in the market um you have to look at what technologies are available in the market what companies have these technologies and the pros the pros and cons of these companies in terms of working with them for instance i've worked on projects where um we had two really good 
competitors out there in terms of what we are looking for in terms of the product development. And um, I think the key difference within one was the time difference and where they're based. So um, they were based within the Australian region, um, whereas the, the other um, partner was based within the European re region. So it was easier for us to then narrow it down to what the business actually wants. They offer like similar products, but we had to look at in terms of resolving issues. How quickly can we respond to it? Do we want delays or what What are the other criteria we could look into? So within the business phase, it's key that, you know, you manage such trade-offs along those lines. And there are multiple other examples where you could actually add impact and add, add value into um, the business um, phase in terms of managing trade-off. Then when moving into the design phase, you end up having iterations of designs coming into the pipeline and you know getting feedback from um, customers from colleagues from different stakeholders within that project so it's key that you know you understand the overall goal of the business in order to manage those trade-offs within those phases i will go um i'll give you more insight into um, the managing um, the techniques to manage trade-offs technical phase this is just when you're within the software development lifecycle phase and you're working directly with the engineers and, you know, they could say, okay, you know what, we're looking at these tools to so use these tools. These are the advantages, disadvantages of using these tools. These are the advantages of having a setting going in terms of going to market strategy. We want to ensure that, you know, you're going to market to this particular set of audience that we have the technology to cater for that. And, you know, what are sort of the pros and cons of using that technology and work screen within the whole software development lifecycle. So that is important, you know, to understand that if you're given a project, let's say, um, to deliver within six months, you know, you could look at various areas and see how you're going to maximize, you know, your time and, you know, improve the team's efficiency and deliver the product um, on time to um, customers as well. So these three areas are key in decision making because whatever trade-off you're managing within each of these phases contributes to the wider goal of um, the entire product itself. In terms of techniques for managing trade-off, I have five techniques here that I use to manage trade-offs, which is very important. Um, the first things first is that you need to know your trade-off. In terms of knowing your trade-off, you need to understand the problem you're trying to solve. Um, understanding the problem is key in every aspect because if you don't understand the problem, you won't be able to brainstorm or, you know, like communicate what you're actually trying to achieve from, you know, having um, trade-off A as, I mean, having component A and, you know, not having component B. So you need to understand what problem you're trying to solve out there in terms of, you know, what the customer um, actually, you know, what the business goals is so that it could tie that back into the business goals to say, this is why we are doing A instead of doing B. Also communication, communication in terms of um, trade-off management is very important. I think communication is one of the key areas where a lot of people tend to um, just on the look um, in the sense that they don't really, you know, see the importance of you know, how important communication is in a bigger, in a wider scale of things in terms of products and managing stakeholders, ETC. Communication also creates like visibility to the team and all the stakeholders, because if you constantly communication, it doesn't matter if it's like, it depends on what product you're working on and who like who your stakeholders are and how they like to work. Um, you know, you could see some most when building a product, most people communicate daily within the stand up, you know, that's just one set of stakeholders. And, you know, you could have biweekly meetings with your external stakeholders or your wider stakeholders, which is also key. And that is really important when managing trade offs so that everyone is clear on the vision and is visible um, to the organization, is visible to the wider organization or wider team on what you're trying to deliver and, you know, so that you could focus on the product itself and let everyone know and carry them along. Also, another one is um, prioritization of trade-offs. So I use this approach called the RICE approach. Um, sounds funny, but um, <laughs> it actually works. So in, in terms of choosing and picking what trade-off to actually present within, um, you know, when you're having this conflicting priorities, um, you know, first of all, you need to understand the reach. You know, if I'm using trade, if I'm using uh, component A or if I'm using future A and future B, 
what impact, what was the reach, what was the audience, what audience is it going to reach? What, what's the customer side of things in terms of, you know, the um, advantages of doing that and the disadvantages of doing that. So you need to compare and balance it off. And also you need to understand the impact, both the positive and the negative impact in also doing that, which um, would give you an idea of, you know, saying, you know, what the customer impact might be, you know, what the, you know, what the, was the probability of that um, impact actually materializing or those issues or the risks you've raised actually materializing ETC. Um, also, um, you have to look at cost as well. You know, do you have, you know, how much is it going to cost you to go for option A or option B? And whereas, you know, if you're going for option B, is it, is it cheaper and is it going to deliver less, less of value or is it going to deliver more value? And sometimes within the cost aspects, it's kind of dependent on what the goal of the organization is and or what the trade-off is you're actually trying to manage. Because sometimes you see that you could go for like a much more expensive um, option because of what the value added is to the product and also the effort required when you're when you're within the product management space and when you're within the um, managing trade-off phases within depending on what feature or what functionality or product you're trying to deliver you have to they have to be compromises in place whereby you know you know your team efforts you know how long it's going to take your team to you have to understand how long it's going to take your team to deliver option A where and option B. And you need to look at your team to see if they have the capacity to actually do that. Because sometimes what happens is that when managing a product, you come to you you get to a roadblock where you have um, you know, the team already working on existing functionalities or just working on something else, and you have to, you know bring this priority that you say okay this priority weighs more than whatever they're working on and take a team member out of what they're originally doing which is going to impact the team momentum and you know if you're working on a product if you've worked with engineers you could tell that within any sprint or any uh, any of the sprint that they're working on once you you know just change the momentum it impacts the whole team because they're already they have to, you know, really look at the whole product you're bringing into the pipeline, the additional product ETC. So you need to understand the team effort and the team morale as well in terms of, you know, what priority is actually, you know, very, what priority you can use to actually actualize whatever product you're building. Um, for example, I've worked on a product where um, we were building a new functionality for our customers and we then had an incident um, which was impacting our live customers. So at that particular point, it's always clear that whatever you're doing, the incident comes first because that's impacting your frontline customers and customers are actually out there. Whereas if you're building a new product, no matter how high up in priority that product is, you need to prioritize the incidents because the incidents is impacting real life customers, whereas the other product is not live yet. So it's very important to understand you know, priorities in terms of managing these trade-offs. And also documenting trade-off is actually key as well in the sense that, you know, when making decisions like this, most of most of the times the decisions are quick and, you know, swift and, you know, developers could just get into the rhythm of making these changes. But from a product manager point of view, we have to make sure that we document these decisions we are making and get relevant sign-off from the stakeholders to say, this is what we agreed to. It's just like a one of those tick box exercises so that, if you're not here tomorrow, you could, you know, people could go into the folders to then say, okay, let's look at why this decision was made over this decision. And let's re, um, you know, if if there's change in business goals or business um, priorities, you could then revisit that and see what the reasons are. So documentation is always key. And also um, trade-offs gives you the opportunity to actually innovate around, you know, certain issues and certain um, dependencies. So, um, you know, when you're, when you're innovating around trade-offs, it's actually very key to understand that sometimes it, it makes it easier for you to walk around the trade-offs in the sense that you're able to then say, okay, you know what, instead of having A and B, we could have A and a little bit of B or B and a little bit of A. So it's a, it's a bit of a mix and match. It creates like, um, you know, conversations going within the team and brainstorming and saying, okay, how are we going to innovate around this? Do we want to go through, you know, maybe 
if it's something that has to do with systems, do we want to do this manually for now? And, you know, just push the changes out to customers whilst we then work on the bigger issues or bigger things we have to like do to make sure that we don't miss our deadlines. So that's actually key as well. Um, <clears throat> and um, just one of the final um, things I would just like to touch on is, you know, decision-making tips um, during the product development, which um, is, it's also key because as a product manager, you're always making decisions at the go. You know, a lot of the developers, the designers, the business guys, governance, regulatory operations, regula regulatory bodies, depends on what product you're working on. You all have you you always have to make a decision at the go, and decision making is key to building a very great product. Um, in terms of decision making tips, I yet never try to be a perfectionist because within our world. There's nothing has been perfect. You know, we're working in a very agile and, you know, streamlined um, environment. So what that means is that you always want to go to market first, test the waters and get feedback from customer. That's how you build a great product. So if you try to be a perfectionist, you just end up, you know, just going back to the waterfall methodology ways where you want everything intact before going to the customer we know within the product um you know development it's not like a fiscal infrastructure where you know you have to build you know make a foundation before you put the roof on or else a building collapse yada 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 but at the end of the day you're building a software development project and you know it's key to actually learn how to you know build and shape and build and shape and continue with that iteration and it's going to make your life much more easier and also getting rid of confirmation bias because um sometimes when you've made a decision you then start doubting the decision you made based on lots of information coming in after you've done your homework and after you've like gathered like you know all the information you already have you know for that particular functionality or product and it gives you the time to then you know, to then start questioning that, oh, you have already made the decision, but I'm getting this information. There are no new information. They're just like other ideas coming into, you know, the pipeline. And it, it creates a whole, you know, forum of never ending ideas and brainstorming. So it's good to actually have that, you know, just get rid of the confirmation bias to say, you know, when you've made a judgment, just try to make sure that you know that whatever judgment you're making, you've done your checklist of, you know, it's data driven, it's fact driven, it's, uh, like as the um as goal driven in terms of where the organization wants to be etc so once you've done those checks it gives you a much more stable mindset to actually say you know what let's focus on this first and maybe later on in the future we'll think about the other things coming into the pipeline um that's it for me um thank you and goodbye and feel free to message me on linkedin cheers <laughs>